the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which yesterday released version 1.0 of its privacy badger for Chrome and Firefox. I love anything with the word badger in it. So this is obviously a great product. <laughs> Noah Schwartz is a staff <laughs> technologist for the EFF and joins us now. Welcome to the show, Noah. Hello. Thank you so Thanks much for, for coming now. Thanks. And now, what is this privacy ba badger business and how does it work exactly? Um, so as you browse around the web, you obviously see a lot of advertisements and occasionally you see a targeted ad, an ad that seems to know something about your browsing history. Um, these targeted ads work because these ads write or read cookies or other identifying information to your browser as you browse the web. So they know who you are and they record a record of all the websites you go to. Um, so what Privacy Badger does is it tries to figure out which things are trying to track you around the web and it blocks requests and cookies from them. So um, what is new in the shipping version that was not available in the beta version of, uh, of, of um, uh, Privacy Badger? A bunch of stuff, a lot of UI fixes. Um, Privacy Badger used to only deal with cookies. Now it deals with HTML5 local storage super cookies, as well as Canvas fingerprinting, which is uh, a query you can do to the browser to sort of figure out what size your screen is and stuff like that. Now, Noah, why should uh, the public care about this uh, dimension of privacy? I mean, what's the harm in having my personal information harvested for the purposes of contextual advertising and also for personalization? Um, I mean, the fear is that someone will know a lot about your browsing habits, and your browsing habits are very sensitive. Um, this isn't first-party tracking we're talking about. We're talking about third-party tracking. So this isn't like... When you go to Amazon.com, Amazon knows what products you look at and it can suggest products in the future. This is when you go to the NewYorkTimes.com, all these advertisers, all these social media platforms know what articles you're reading and they know things about your politics or what sensitive information to you, anything where these third parties are hosted. Um, so, I mean, this is obviously a great tool and, and it works on the desktop, but as more and more uh, browsing starts to take place on mobile, um, do you have any plans for trying to use, you know, whether it's iOS 9's, you know, content blocking stuff or some of the technologies within, you know, Chrome for Android, do you have any plans to try to develop tools that would work on mobile browsers? Um, so that's one of the things we're looking at. Uh, it's a lot different. Mobile browsers um, work very differently than desktop browsers. and. Uh, one of the things you want to fix on mobile is what apps are talking to you, and a lot of the data goes through apps, so we don't have the ability to do that yet. But we're definitely looking at other desktop browsers besides Chrome and Firefox currently.